Welcome to the beer, uh, B, B stream, sorry. Uh, we have Lothar versus Naiman elimination match. Me and Zlay are gonna cast you. Woo. We already have the bans. Uh, Naiman banned Lothar's Shaman, so Lothar is left with... Um, no, Naiman banned Lothar's Druid, so Lothar is left with Rogue Shaman Warrior. And uh, Lothar banned Naiman's Shaman, so Naiman is left with Temple Mage Warlock Warrior. What do you think? Well, so Lothar banned Shaman because he's bringing Rogue. Pretty yeah. normal stuff. Nine and banning Druid, I think, is like uh, the interesting thing. Yeah, it might indicate that his Warlock is a Reno Lock, um, and that's why he didn't want to ban Warrior. And so he goes for a Druid, which is just kind of, you know, one of the strongest classes. Tough to beat, Yogg Druid. I don't know. I think he's just afraid of, like, Lothar sweeping him with Druid. Mm -hmm. Like, he saw Lothar just destroying uh, Powder with Druid 3 0. So he's like, normally I can beat Lothar. The only way he can be Lothar can beat me is with Druid. <laughs> Maybe just Naiman underestimating the power of uh, the G2 Captain Lothar. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to underestimate I just watched his match. It was, uh, it was very complicated, very close. He just barely lost, and it was because of Sogoth the Slither in Reno Lock. That That's was the decider. That's a weird card. Like, first of all, like, you have to, your opponent to play Reno Lock, which I don't know why they would, that, they would play that. because No, Reno Lock won better. with Sogoth yeah, against yeah. the Combo Warrior. Okay. Yeah, I was saying, like, you as a combo warrior, first of all, your opponent has to play Reno Lock, which is weird. They should usually play Zoo, and mm -hmm. you are, have a, re a really good matchup against Zoo. Yep. And if they play Reno Lock, they also have to play Sogat, which is like a weird card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he didn't expect it, and I don't blame him. It was kind of a insane tech card. Worked out great. What do you think of Sogoth? I mean, it's it's not just against Combo Warrior, right? Like, big taunts seem to be kind of a thing in this tournament that, that's doing well, right? Just, just Bog Creeper decks. <laughs> Come on. Come I on, Froden 6 0. No respect? Uh, I don't know. It's like the Tempo Storm deck. We'll have to like wait and see if it's actually good or if it's just uh Surprise value. Surprise value, yeah. Yeah. What's your guess? Surprise value. Yeah. <laughs> Bog Creeper, come on. I don't know, man. I, I like to believe. Bog Creeper is the future. Bog Creeper's the truth. Yeah, it beats like very aggressive decks, but I don't think it beats anything other than aggressive decks. So no, I don't know. We're not in the game just yet. No, they're both preparing. Let's see, like, lineup-wise, who is favorite to win? Well, we have Mage, I'm going to assume so, Reno Lock and Warrior no, from Naiman. No, it's Zoo with the Leroy. It is? Yeah, we he played it earlier. There. So it's like Zoo, Dragon Warrior, Temple Mage. Okay. Lothar has Rogue. Oh, we're in the game. Are we? Yeah, we're, we're going to game. Yeah, I just so. need to spectate. There we go. Well, Alex draws a champion. Twilight Guardian's a good start for Dragon Warrior. Can't ask for much better. Uh, Dragon Warrior against Rogue tends to be fairly 50-50. Do you have a preferred side? Dragon Warrior, I think, is like the slightly favored one, especially with a hand like this. Well, yeah. You keep Alexa and you keep Twilight Guardian, right? Are we both spectating the same person? We are. That's the problem. Okay. So how do I get out of this? I should spectate Lothar and you should spectate Naiman, I think. Okay, just, well, you're spectating Just Naiman. leave. No, I spectate Lothar. Right? It says Nyman on the bottom of your screen. Oh, whoops. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, no, he's All right. Him. Yeah, yeah. We're good at casting. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think you bulk in the Blackwing Corruptor because, you know, turns one and three happen. And you keep Alex Jaws as champion and Twilight Guardian pretty much every time, even if they weren't, you know, dependent on one another. And on the other side, Argent Squire, Tomb Pillager, Dark Rain Skulker, Cold Blood. So I imagine you're keeping Argent Squire because it's a one drop, and you're keeping Tomb Pillager because it's probably the best four drop in your gadget rug these days. In the game, I would say. The best four drop in the game. Now yes. the Shredder is gone. Yeah. When Shredder was a thing, it didn't really see much play. Now it's the best in the game. No, it's not playing Rogue, but it wasn't like Some. that insane. Yeah. It's a very interesting uh, matchup, I would say. Like, the Dragon Warrior just, like, applies blind pressure. But mm -hmm. if the Rogue gets the board, there's a big chance that he's just going to, like, uh, steal the game and run away with it. Right. So, is this Argent Squire a big advantage, then, since it's um, so annoying to remove? It or is it not a big deal? I mean, it's very bad if the Warrior player would have had Blood to Iker. Mm -hmm. It would be pretty bad if he would have Ravaging Ghoul. Yep. And uh, it would be good for Lothar if he would have a Cold Blood to, like, enhance it. He actually had the Cold Blood and chose the Mulligan, which I agreed with. I mean, yeah, you don't keep it. Okay. Do you trade? Yeah, board control, right? It's turn two. It's too... Uh... Do you trade? Like, now Lothar has the option to just degree down. 
and you basically trade free health, one uh, attack of the dagger, and your Argent Squire for his Alessata's champion. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't trade, you're more vulnerable to something like a backstab, and eh, that's not that strong of an argument, is it? Maybe I think you just go face. To go face, yeah. As nine one, I would have gone face. So Lothar Corn has like a really, yeah, yeah. You want to like just uh, milk the coins out of the pillagers to have power with your auctioneer. So this is getting pretty awkward with Frothing Berserker staring at a 5-4. If I play a 3-6 taunt here, the 5-4 value trades pretty well with a dagger, although the Frothing Berserker still needs to be dealt with. Um, is there any world where you sap it? It's super right, we're sapping the Twilight Guardian, right? And just yeah, value yeah. trade into the frothing. It seems really good. Is it? You can also just like double trade, play Tomb Pillager, but then the frothing is jacked. It's at uh, 5 attack? Yeah. It's not and a... we just took 3 down to 22. Mm. It's, it's scary if there's a Ravaging Ghoul to finish off that Tomb Pillager, right? That's a lot of damage. And then an Execute. Yeah. That could go very badly. I mean, then you can just sap on Cleave. The issue with the sap play this turn is we're not developing anything behind it. We're just re-daggering. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not that bad to re-dagger, but it's pretty bad. I think the sap's fine. It's like we're sap spending two mana bad. to sap a four drop, and so that's like we gain an innervate out of it kind of thing, which is generally a good card, and it comes with the valley trade. So I think it's a pretty good turn to just sap re-dagger, even though the re-dagger part of the turn is weak. Mm. What do you think of Cold Blood Edwin? That's pretty bad, right? Yeah... The plays that involve leaving frothing up scare me because we just we don't have any eviscerate to deal with it. So. I mean, this is not patron warrior. I think I, I think it's fine. Okay, it's not that bad. Like, there's no way Naiman can like punish Lothar insanely. It's even mainly the ravaging ghoul execute that would be yeah, scary. Like, even with ravaging ghoul execute, even there he can just sap one cliff and deals with the frothing basically. Yeah, I mean, so Lothar. Um, Kind of made the big balls play here, and it looks like he's getting rewarded. Uh, Naiman doesn't have what he needs to punish this kind of play. Yeah, he needs to, like, play with balls. In this what do you even up. do here? This looks awful. This hand, wow. Do we put... It's one okay, of the... we're just going face for eight. And we're going to let him value trade into our Alex Strauss' yeah. champion. Uh -huh. Gross. Yeah, you let him value trade, actually. Uh, okay, well, uh, one upside to this is uh, the Rogue is now at 14, so Draconid Crusher is activated on turn 6. We have Malkrock for some more follow-up damage. But, of course, the Draconid Crusher getting sapped, that's two innervates worth of value, uh, of tempo, rather. Mm -hmm. So Lothar just trades the 5-4 into the 3-3 free free and then goes sap Edwin. Yeah, is there any interest in some kind of... Uh, co what if we... um? Any way we go, like, coin, cold blood, sap, Edwin, and we go face for eight instead of trading to the 3-3. Three, three. That's pretty ballsy. We just saw an execute. I mean, you're not killing him next turn, so that means that you'll give the warrior two turns to kill you, which is very likely. I wouldn't do that, yeah. I think just playing it like this is fine. Yeah, I mean, this is strong. The 5-1 we saw is awkward for him to deal with. He executed it last turn. Uh, yeah. And this saves the coin for, you know, a really good gadget next turn. Yeah, even if Naiman plays a Draconid, Lothar can just like double trade and then Auctioneer, Coin, Coin, Conceal. You start with Auctioneer and then Coin. Actually... You Cold Blood the Tomb Pillager into it, right? Oh. You Gadget, Coin, Cold Blood, trade the Tomb Pillager, oh, Coin, Conceal after hitting with Edwin. Yeah, that's the plan. It's play. sick. Yeah, it's sick, actually. Yeah, Holy so Dragon shit. Warrior is like basically just dead. <laughs> Yeah, this is insane. He needs he like the only way for Dragon Warrior to win here is to smork down over two turns, which he can do. Yeah, Malkrock into Doomhammer. He just needs Malkrock to give him like a five attack weapon, or he needs to pick up more damage. Oh yeah, just any Arcanite Reaper plus the Corkon Elite is a two turn lethal. Yeah, easy. Easy. <laughs> so how many of those weapons are there? There's Gladiators, Longbow, Arcanite Reaper. Um, Core Howl's not en enough. Oh, Gromosh actually looks kind of slow. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Probably just Malkarok. Yeah, you're Malkarok. Malkarok need weapon. Do you know if Naiman plays Inner Rage? I have no clue. He might play. He probably plays Blood Viker, but that's probably not enough. It's yeah, it's too, too slow. Too many I turns. Th yeah. Think. Well, it... he could top at the second Cork run, right? That'll be like enough. He could top the another. No, he used both Alexas. 
This was like his other charge that he had. It's just going to depend a lot on what this Malkroc does. Most of the time it's not good Curse enough. Blade. but go. No. It was a 2-3. It was a 2-3 indeed. I think I got three Curse Blades in two days off Malkroc. I was a little bit upset. I wasn't playing Never a lot those two lucky. days. It was just, well, you know, I hit some Gore Howls too. Like. So it's Talnos, uh, Talnos if he's already concealed, right? Yeah, that seems pretty good. We put him at 20. Do you have enough? Do you to need to conceal? Let me ask you that. What if we just Thalnos Eviscerate and SI his face? I'm going to start with Thalnos Eviscerate, see what that card yeah, is. Because yeah. that it, part's happening. It depends on what you draw. It all depends on what you draw. Probably SI. I don't think Conceal is enough to win. If Conceal is enough to set up two turn little, then you Conceal. Right. I'm not sure if it's enough. He only has 9, plus Lira is 15. He needs Dagger's SI 16. agent. He doesn't always need the SI7 Agent. Like, he just needs 4 damage when you consider the Dagger, but I guess... Actually, you know, he doesn't have mana for that 4 damage, because Leroy plus Dagger is 7 mana, you only have 1 mana left. You'd have to hit the Cold Blood. So yeah, yeah, yeah. SI is correct. Good play, good play. So now Naiman just, like, Gromash is into the Auctioneer, or what? Yeah, and 2 to the face. And then we have 6 damage for the following turn. We just need to draw 4, which is Corcoran, or... Presumably something. Lucky Ragnaros... So on board, there's 12, 13 showing, so we would die to 5 damage from the rogue, which is like a second Eviscerate, or SI7 plus something, or just the Leroy that we can see, obviously. Yeah, Naiman is not in the best of uh, shape. Yeah, it seems like you have to Gromosh into the Auctioneer and go face for 2. He might S go for the greedy play and play Corcron into the Auctioneer. Just keep the Gromosh. For a Try and draw Yaker. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's better. I like that a lot now that you mention it. Another play would be playing uh, Frothing, attacking into the Auctioneer, executing, and then playing Corcoran Face. How would that be? Yeah, no, Lota doesn't have enough, right? Yeah, I mean, now we just have to draw Icker. It's pretty good. So pretty you know Auctioneer prep. If you draw this, I think you win. No, you don't. No, you don't, you don't, never mind. So, because we saw the Argent Squire, this list should have no Farce here, so we're not really going to get out of the range of that Gromash Icker. So, there's not a lot that really matters this turn. Yeah, I guess you just Gadget and you prep. You literally only used to Icker. How many cards does the Warrior have? He has 19, 19 so just over 10%. Okay. So Lothag is in like a 90% spot. There's also Ragnaros gives some outs. With the 2 damage from the weapon, it's 10. I mean, what's the chance of Ragnaros? It's like, you add... Uh, it's like 1 out of 19 of Rag, and then like, from that 1, of, uh, one out of 19, it's You're 25%. Like 1 in 5, yeah. So it's like 1 in 100. So you add 1 in 100 to like 10%. So you add like... 11%. Yeah. Great. <laughs> hey. Alright, there's the Skulker. So Lothar's list is consist consistent with the rest of uh, what we've been seeing other people playing Rogue lately. Yeah. No, that ain't Falco. Ooh. Is there any way we can do anything cool here? Azure Drake? Nah. Revenge. That's the line. <laughs> no, there's no revenge in this deck. Revenge. It's a joke. Yeah, it would be sick, right? Azure Drake Revenge. Clear your board. Get some. So, can we see these friendly cards anywhere? Looks like no. I don't think it matters what they are anyways. We're just clicking buttons because we can. It's understandable. It's hard to let go of a game. Well played. I can see Nymon a bit. Technically, not lethal. Needs one damage. Ooh, Deadly Poison does it. SI7 does it. Leroy does it. Yeah. I think SI7 is the card I would want to show amongst those. It's the least information. This being last year standing when we knew the deck, you have to play it again, so you kind of want to win while revealing minimum information. I, tr I think that Lothar tries more to like uh, enter into Naimon's head, put him on the tilt. Uh, that's why he used the well-played mode. Really? Yeah, very effective. Naimon doesn't really care. Uh -huh. He's um, a very calm player, usually. Alright, so we have to try and beat Lothar's Rogue now with our Warrior defeated. So we have 
Either Temple Mage or Temple Mage. It's got to be Temple Mage, right? Uh, I think Zoos will be better. Really? Well, he seems to agree with you. Okay, he goes for the Zoo. The Flame Strike comes to my mind from Temple Mage as being really good against, you know, rogue minions often have four health, even if you conceal them. He only runs one. Okay. He doesn't like two. He Do you like two still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made fun of me that I'm running two. I think like, Hotform is playing zero, so you guys really need to talk. I mean, we talked with Holtform last night. We were watching him playing some Temple Mage. I disagreed mm -hmm. like a lot of his plays. Okay. And uh, Holtform is like somebody that you cannot contradict. Like even if he made the, the strictly wrong play, he'll find like arguments for his wrong decision. Mm -hmm. He would be a very good politician. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vote for Holtform. Coin Peddler instead of Voidwalker. What do you think of that? Is that correct? And why? I, I assumed I was just going to play Voidwalker there and preserve the flexibility of my coin. I guess Coining Peddler has an upside in that it has a second attack. So it does a little bit more damage. Um, we're looking to turn to Voidwalker abusive. Or turn to Voidwalker plus one drop from Peddler. I don't like that. You don't like, like Coin Peddler? You just like Voidwalker? Yeah, if you go Voidwalker, you give yourself all the, all the options. If he has like coin backstab, he's probably going to backstab. If he doesn't have backstab, he can go for like abusive, abusive. He can go for like Peddler into Coin abusive. He can go for like Peddler into Coin, whatever you get. Mm -hmm. It's just more versatile. Right. He also opts for the Blood Imp. I think Naiman is trying to play a bit too fancy here. I thought Power Overwhelming was the pick there. It's it's bad with his hand because his hand already has that sort of effect. It's very redundant to two abusives and a Power Overwhelming already, but still, it's just a much more powerful card. Blood Imp can be weak to Fana Knives. Okay, so turn two here. I'd probably rather play Daryl Falfa when it's buffing two minions, so I guess it's just Void Walker and Abusive. Yeah. With abusive yeah. in the middle. I don't know. I think I like Lothar attacking to the 2 2. Oh, the Blood Imp. The Blood Imp. Eh, maybe that makes more sense. Yeah. Again, a bit too fancy, but. You don't like it? Eh, it's fine. He doesn't really want a fan of knives here. He wants because like... he has the Thalnos, but I think you do it anyways because you do have Skulker for turn five. So Thalnos fan of knives isn't a big deal, unless you find a prep. But okay, so you just go like fan of knives, and then you probably attack. Yeah, because you just hit it again next turn. Yeah, and then you play like pillager next turn. You kill the Voidwalker. They, he's gonna eventually trade into your pillager, and then you play that kind of Skulker to clear, and then you get the coin. Then you go like auctioneer or something. I don't know, this game can go either way. Naiman has like a lot of buff cards in his hand, so like if Lothar manages to clear his board, then uh, Naiman is going to have nothing. But it looks like do. that's not going to happen. It looks like these buff cards are going to be effective next turn for value. Oh, prep. Prep is the draw that makes you want to save the Phantom Knives still. I like having made the decision based on, you know, the information we had at the time. Yeah, yeah. So this is Direwolf Alpha and Abusive Sergeant goes on the far right. I like the way Lothar is um, using his hands. Like, um, to conceal his face? Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's like a classic uh, poker strategy. Uh -huh. To keep both uh, fists from your mouth to your nose. Uh huh. It conceals your facial expressions. Interesting. You cannot read him, basically. But do you think Naiman's really looking at his face? I don't think he's tall enough. Yeah, it looks like there's some stuff in the way. I don't think it's relevant. Unless he has, like, infrared. Do you think Naiman has infrared? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. <laughs> Probably not. So, solid turn for the rogue. Solid turn for the zoo. Pretty back and forth game. Probably start with a life tap here. Then we abusive our abusive into his tomb pillager. And awkwardly waste a mana. And this is actually getting pretty bad for zoo. Although, how close are we to just smorking him? If we abusive power overwhelming to the face, that's what, 6, 10 with another 4 in our hand? It's actually a play, right? You're 5 off. If yeah, so Doomguard, Doom Guard. anytime we find Doomguard, we can win. I mean, if the deck doesn't play any taunts and it doesn't play any heals, I think it's a real play. I don't know. It feels bad to leave a Tomb Pillager up this early. It's but risky the hand, as fuck. The hand is kind of telling me, find a Doomguard and win. I mean, it's easy to say why you're casting. But yeah, I don't think I would actually make that play in the game. If you're there like, on the elimination match, you would probably play, make the most uh, defensive line ever as a lay. Yeah, I probably. I think you're right. I would probably just abusive trade my abusive in and go face for two. Put it yeah. in seventeen. A as casters, we try to like find these like uh, weird balls, fancy plays. lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That work only because we see both hands. No, it oh, doesn't have anything okay. to do with seeing the other guy's hand, does it? Wait, what? Oh, he just wants to soul fire the villager. It's also fine. Okay. But he, he wanted to pitch the mortal damage. coil. Now he gets wrecked by a dark iron skulker. Unlucky. Backstab for you, a backstab for you. Everyone has a backstab. Yeah, that card's pretty good. 
Well, well a second PO, that would have been one of lethal if uh, Nyman would have went for the Zalei line of play. Although one off lethal is not that different from five off lethal. They're both just Doom Guard. Actually, it would have been lethal. Would because it? he would PO the abusive. Yeah. And then he would still have to attack with the Peddler, so it's two plus four extra. It's bigger than five. Um, would the Tomb Pillager have cleared our board? Okay, Tomb Pillager would trade. Never mind. Yeah. I forgot about Pillager. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, it turns out when you don't kill it, it doesn't go away. Oh. <laughs> Unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> so, difficult turn here. I might have started by trading in Mortal Coiling. Yeah, I think like you want to draw with Mortal Coil rather than drawing with the tap. I don't like this line of play from Naiman. Naiman is already like tilting, I think. He's feeling yeah, the that, pressure. Yeah, that councilman's eating a really juicy value trade from this Dark Iron Skulker. Lot Lothar is already like in control again in this game. He goes Auctioneer, Coin, Cold Blood, Prep, and... Yeah, and Eviscerate, he, he and that just, clears right there. He's just while playing with cars. Naiman. Yeah, it looks like Lothar has this one. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really, like, yeah. Gadget, Coin, Cold Blood, Value Trade into the Councilman, Prep, Eviscerate the 2-2, two -two, and along the way you're drawing cards, you could find something even better to do. Yeah, sapping the Councilman is pretty good. He's never going to What do you think about uh, Cold Blood before Prep? It's a bit complicated. See, like, a card before? Yeah. Does it help? I don't know. Um, that's what I'm asking you, not w trying to figure it out. Would have helped if the Pedro was just, like, a blank 2-2 two -two because you could, like, hit the backstab? I mean, he can still hit the backstab, never mind. Oh, he doesn't want to... He, uh, no, he can use Conceal, yeah. He doesn't need to Cold Blood. Yeah, although how conceal relevant now. is Conceal? It plays around, I guess it plays around Doom Guarding the Gadget. I mean, you obviously pay Conceal over Cold Blood here, right? Yeah, yeah. Playing Cold Blood and trading doesn't uh, give it you doesn't anything. doesn't do a whole lot. The other alternative is playing Cold Blood and hitting face, which is not like he's thinking of, but I don't think it's the correct decision, because like, that's one way you can lose. Yeah, this is pretty risky. He's you lose to PO Doom Guard now. Straight up. I don't that know. seems really bad. Yeah, Lothar just went for a weird line of play. Argent Horse Rider. Okay, so I was not expecting this in a list with Councilman, and it would have worked well with the Smork line of play I suggested earlier. Although, I don't know if he'd be dead by now, because leaving Tomb Pillager up, the damage adds up quickly. Yeah, I really would have liked to see the Conceal by Lothar. He would just, like, win yeah. the game instantly. Yeah, just trade Conceal. Trade Conceal. You just protect just... your life, though. <laughs> like... And you protect your minions, because, I, like, Naima can... Uh... Kill your minions. I don't care as much about that. I care more about just not him not having a body to attack me with or put power overwhelming or anything like that. So many hmm. I still think uh, Naiman is uh, unfavored to win this game. Yeah, so what can we do to figure this one out? How much damage do we you have? You play Horse Rider, you attack into the 8-3 coil, and then like PO the 2-2 two -two and train to the Auctioneer. And wow. then you hold from the coil to get like a 1-drop that you can play. And then next turn, you, after you play the one drop now, you can have like next turn uh, okay. console man into Argus. Hear me out. What if instead we horse rider coil the 8 3, but we PO our peddler at his face to put him down to 5 for Doom Guard Lethal? What the fuck was this? This was worse. Did you just see what I saw? Did he actually do that? Or am I. What the fuck was that? Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. He's dead. He's straight up dead. Yeah, L L Lothar cannot believe. Now he like counts. He's like, did Naiman just like, what? Like Naiman had a clear board. He yep. had to just play the horse rider. Okay. I actually liked not clearing the board. I feel like clearing the board um, didn't apply enough pressure. I, I I just keep wanting to put it to where I just have to draw Doom Guard and kill the rogue. That's what I'm thinking. Because okay. like the rogue is kind of winning this game. You kind of have to get lucky to steal it. I feel like if he would have cleared the board, he had like a, the best chance of winning. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Well, okay, you liked killing the gadget. I liked putting that six damage to the face, so Doom Guard's lethal. I mean, you can win in two turns, anyways. You can win in two turns, anyways. Yeah, he cannot kill you because he doesn't have anything on the board. But how are you gonna? How are you ever pushing any damage? You don't have board control. Like the rogue has a full hand, and you, and do you have, have board no board. Control. Next time you have like Consumer into Argus. It's enough board control for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we're keeping prep and I guess Argent Squire. Definitely not the conceals. Squire is very bad, but I mean, we probably don't keep it. It's very bad because there's arcane missiles and yeah. flame waker and Everything mage hero power. Her. She's just useless. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a one drop and it's the only one drop in our deck, we still just don't want it in this matchup, you think? 
Yeah, the only situation where Squire is good is um, when your opponent just like plays a free throw into it. But he would never do that, right? Yeah, that's that would be pretty weird. Also, even Mana Worm picks it up. So here, if we had an Argent Squire, it might be relevant with the dagger for contesting the Mana Worm over a couple of turns. Frostball face. No, you don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever do that? He does it! Okay! <laughs> Lothar is like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, um... That's Louis. aggressive. Okay, you know what Lothar can do? Prep Shadow Strike face, eviscerate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, like, answer with aggression. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you deal five, I deal five. Okay, what's a real line of play? The real line of play is... Just... Prep Shadow Strike face, eviscerate the mana worm. Yeah, you're not... Okay, no, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, L we could dagger is pass. Lothar is caught off guard now. Doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who does? <laughs> we'll probably just dagger out. Yeah, and just pass. Yeah, next time you can, like, prep Shadow Strike. If you say, I think the coin has a break, it's good enough. If he doesn't play a minion, then you can just, like, uh, Shadow Strike. Yep. So you're good. Yeah, so if he plays Wa Flame Waker next turn, we'll prep Shadow Strike if it's right to clear. Yes. Okay. And if he doesn't, just, we just Shadow Strike. We just Shadow Strike, yeah. It's understandable that he's roping here, because when your opponent Frostbolts your face on turn two, you got to wonder, what does it say about his hand? How many fireballs does he have right now? What's going on that this is what he's choosing to do? Torch face? No. Just do it, Naimon. No. <laughs> the thing is that Lothar is one game away of qualifying, and not only sending the... You're one of the European representatives at BlizzCon home, uh -huh. but also like making uh, the G2 f whole squad advancing into the, round, into the top of 16. Oh, that's 16. such a good feeling. Yeah. Just winning as a team. I like the Flame Waker. Also, like the, ho the whole of Archon is advanced. Uh, every Archon member that yeah. is attending the tournament yeah, yeah. is advanced, yes. 100%. 100%. Sick. Zalei carrying the brand. Yeah. <laughs> So now you just like prep Shadow Strike Eviscerate. Mm -hmm. And you put Naiman in a very, very bad spot. All according to plan. Naiman reasonably believed that, you know, if he didn't deal with the Mana Worm last turn, he's probably not going to deal with Mana Worm plus Flame Waker this turn. However, as it turns out, he is. Yeah. Ooh, he preps the Eviscerate instead of the Shadow Strike. This way, he it's uses all three mana. Yeah, yeah, it's better mana utilization. <laughs> Which is <laughs> it's a joke for people who watch the HPL, yeah. Yeah, HPO, never forget. God. Mana utilization being ranked. Yeah. <laughs> Notag is one step away from becoming the best player in the world. He just needs some more blowback. <laughs> That's it. Well, mirror image is getting in the way of blowback. Can't take that face damage by attacking things through the weapon. Zero attack taunts. Wow. Like, whoa, Skulker's pretty good against mirror images. Lothar's face says everything you need to know about this game. Lothar's literally Ellie giggling right now. Okay, his face calmed down a little bit. Unlucky. Okay. Like, you can have okay. all the facial expressions you want because your opponent cannot see you behind that big screen. Mm hmm It's not like uh, it is on the main stage. I like this. Patience yeah, no with hurry. the Skulker. Yeah, yeah. Just bait him. Yeah, hit some more things with the Skulker. Why not? But now you can get wrecked. Skulker deadly? I came blast. But yeah, Skulker deadly is also like a good answer for that. Actually, like, Naiman can actually win. He has a lot of burst in his hand. Fireball Torch is already 12. Yep. Cabal of Stones, another 30. Sure. But Lothar still has to go for the Deadly Poison, Dark Arm Skulker. Yep. Clear board's a good board. I mean, if Naiman doesn't do anything uh, good next time, Lothar can just uh, mm. go for the YOLO low game plan of, like, going prep, SI agent, cold block, cold block, conceal. This will be an interesting play. Yeah, Lothar can, can put Naiman on a clock, starting next turn. So like, Na Naiman needs to remove this minion. If he doesn't remove this minion, he's gonna get super wrecked. Well, that's a pretty good answer to the minion. Yeah. You like Thalnos, Arcane Blast, Fireball Face? Fireball Face. Yeah. Are you sure he's gonna Fireball? Wow. Oh, yeah. Really? Dude, we're trying to set up this lethal. Now we just have to draw a fireball and we'll have, you know, lethal damage. Just the one out of... Well, we also have the Kabbalist Tome for redraws when that doesn't work. The one out of 18 fireball. Yeah, easy. Shores away. 
I mean, maybe there's another torch in there. I don't know. Figure it out. There's a torch, a frost bolt, maybe some arcane missiles. The main thing is the Cabalist Tome with the Roaring Torch is approximately 12 damage. Which one of those is the most expandable? I think the most expandable is either the Preparation or one of the SIs. So I either go SI SI or I go Prep SI SI. I guess SI SI is fine. I think the play is SI SI and... And Hit Face. Yeah. With the weapon. Yeah. Because you don't have enough life to trade into a minion with your three attack weapon, and you don't have enough uh, things to do with your mana next turn, so you're likely re-daggering, so you just have to attack with the dagger to the face, even okay. though he's at 30. Oh, okay. Well, Nightman has the Flame Wanker. I think I like Cabalist Tome here, and we just go for a crazy Flame Waker next turn. Okay. Wow, wow that's going to be a that's crazy Flame that, Waker. Yeah, this is going to work. So next turn we have nine mana, which is Flame Waker Torch is six, Missiles, Missiles, Blast is nine. You just draw in Torch Face. Okay. Easy. Next thing you win. Yep. Can this ever go you wrong? Could, you could also do something like Arcane Blast Ping instead. Does that make any sense? Nah. Uh, you're a man. If you're a man, you... You make an excellent point. I yes. am a man. I mean, Arcane Blast is not that bad, but... Rowing Torch sends a message. Ooh. What? Why would you ever well, do that? If the sooner you Arcane Missiles, the less minions he has in play. Like, he's going to get more minions in play over time, okay. which lowers the odds of Arcane Missiles going face, which is what you're looking for. Interesting. Ooh. This Teacher is insane. plays some minions. Like, now, Lothar can just go for full board. Oh, and he will. There's no way he's not going to. And if he gets lucky, Naiman is just going to, like, not kill him. Mm hmm Actually, I think Naiman kills him with the dragon thing. The dragon breath. I, I think it's going to be lethal, yeah. Or does he? It's going to be pretty hard not to. You definitely attack and then, like, prep conceal dagger. You need to, like, uh, Seems good. get maximum out of tokens. I think Naiman wins, but I'm not sure. Well, he might, have, he might have Flame Strike in mind right now. If you Flame Strike, all you have left is a 3-1 Violet Teacher. You'd probably lose to Flame Strike either way. You're not in a spot where you can afford to play around it. You could beat it if you save the prep conceal, you just draw into a gadget. Yeah, sure. Nah, I like this. I like concealing this as well. Those 7-2s should probably be concealed. We could have had one more damage if Let's we hit see. with the dagger this last turn. This turn is going to be very interesting. Well, nah, Naiman, it's Naiman be simple. Has... What? Oh, it's just easy. Okay, you don't even have to do anything. Actually, it's four damage. I thought it's three. Whatever. Yawn. All right, so series stays alive. Naiman on his Temple Mage. Lothar has Shaman and Warrior. Shaman is not that great against Temple Mage. Warrior is pretty good. Yeah. So do warrior it with, is. Do you go with the best matchup or do you go with the worst one? Does it have like any mental difference? I mean, there's arguments both ways. Um, there's also questions about information. Which deck can use the information about the opponent's list better? Okay. Um, so if you have like a decision-heavy control deck, you might want to queue that one last. Okay. Another has a garbage hand. And again, in a garbage hand. Even though Reddit says that 4 7 7 is like the best thing you can have. Ooh. In this situation, oh, okay. Trog saves the day. Yeah. Still, like, you don't want to play Shaman on on the play. You want Shaman on the coin. Right, because the Shaman has so few 2 drops, right? If it's yeah, not yeah. Totem Golem on 2, sometimes you get to Flame Tongue on 2, but a lot of times you just have a weak turn 2. If you have coin, you can bypass that by going 1 into 3 into 3. Or more often, coin... Well... Also often, Coin Totem Golem into 1 into 3. Even if you had Totem Golem on the play, you played Golem on 2 and then next turn... You're stuck with a 2 mana yeah, and, yeah. and no good 2 drops. So, like, you have nothing to do. Well, you just go Tunnel Trog into Totem Golem into Totem Golem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good hand. Yeah. And then the following turn, you play Tuscar Totemic and roll another Totem Golem. <laughs> okay, the thing is that it, this hand is not that bad for Lothar. If he manages something for turn 2, then he plays Feralus on 3. Then let's say he gets a Flame Tongue on 4. On 5, he plays a Faceless. On 6, he also plays another Faceless. So he can just clue those up on 5 and 6. He has Feralus on 3. He just needs to like fill the turn 4 with 2 mana. So Lothar basically needs 2 2 mana cards. Wow, we have... we're going for the Coin Apprentice. Okay. Are we no. doing the Missiles? No, we just want the value trade. Okay. Lotta needs a way to deal with that. Lightning Bolt, Totem Golem. No. Town Totem. He needs Town Totem. 
25%? Ooh. Nope. That ain't down totem. Unlucky. No, Naiman is All right, very so happy. Alright, so is very rewarded for his turn one risk. What's the risk? I mean, he could have been patient, just done nothing. Um, but, yeah, this was a good risk to take. Okay. So you play Tusker here. Do you? Ah, oh, you could Feral's. I like Feral Spirits quite a bit. One issue with Tuscar Totemic here is the totem it spawns often just can be value traded, although I suppose Temple Mage might be in the Smork line of business at this point in the game. The thing is that if you go for Tuscar, you can go for Flame Rift Faceless, and that allows you to go for Ferals afterwards. And I Ferals see. on 5 allow you to go for the second Flame Rift Faceless. If you Ferals on 3, you have Flame Tongue on 4, but Flame Tongue's not strong on 4 because there are those mirror images in the way. Yeah. Okay, so I like the Totemic. Makes sense. Sounds like somebody won on the mainstream. Yeah, we, we hear cheering and stuff. Still, I assume it's like was a very, played. very, very interesting game here. Deciding game, the spirit. loser goes home. I mean, doesn't, we don't kick him out. He, he, can, could. Still, he can still hang around, Yeah. take some selfies with the winners. And uh, it's, a, it's a good event to be a loser at. I mean, win or lose. Seed yeah, Story yeah. is one of my favorite tournaments. Maybe my favorite tournament. I mean, you haven't been to that many tournaments, have you? A uh, decent amount, I don't know. I mean, from the open ones, you cannot compare it. This story is like... Dramatically eight. better. Yeah, yeah. What to do? What to do? So, fairly awkward turn here. Are we fireballing a 2-3 taunt? I really don't want to. We're going to play Azure Drake on 5, Emperor on 6. Why is he playing Emperor in the deck? Maybe he has Antonitis. Maybe it's just for setting up those big Flame Waker turns. Where you go Flame Ooh. Waker, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Hey. Do you do it? No, you never do it. Yeah. I'm not sure if you even play Flame Dark. I, I would just hero power. power, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you can kill the zero one regardless. Yeah. Right. And then you play Flame Rift Faceless with the Flame Tongue Totem. Kill two, six. yep. Yeah. I don't even know if I play the Totem then. I might just keep Hero Powering. So I have the Lightning Storm when I actually care about getting through okay, these Okay, against, against Drake, you probably keep Hero Powering. Yeah. Roll a nice spell power. Nah, we don't want a Lightning Bolt, though. Do we? Yeah, you play the Flame Rift Faceless. That's a good play. Yeah. You still attack, even though you plan on Lightning Storm your next turn. Yeah, of course. It's free damage. Might not Lightning Storm. Yeah, yeah. Like, even if there's, like, 1% that you don't Lightning Storm next turn, you still have to, like, put that 1 damage. There's no backfiring. Even there's a 100% chance that I do Lightning Storm next turn, I still put that 1 damage just to conceal the Lightning Storm a little bit. To skip the attack is just giving away I information mean, so for no reason. Sometimes it might be better to scare your opponent. Scare your opponent? I think it's just throwing away information. What What if he wouldn't have the Lightning Storm and he wouldn't attack? Oh, just, I see. Just, just, a bluff. To just to fuck with Naiman, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. We're going deep now. Okay, I like it. Like I said, just play the second Flame Rift Faceless. I like to pronounce the name of this card. Yeah, I'm noticing that. People always call it 4 mana 7 7. Yeah. But he has a name, he has a feelings. Uh, does he? I don't think he does. Yeah. I think you might be mistaken on this one. <laughs> I serve the, Fire Lord. the Flame Wanker, he's the board. And he's pretty oh. good. Two more shots. That's, That's nice. A very awkward trade for the Azure Drake. No, just cause face. The seven two gets the awkward trade. He doesn't know about that lightning storm. What if Lothar just like rolls spell power and then double rolls high? <clears throat> that would be a good play. Yeah, would be solid. Twenty five percent and then fifty fifty twice. Yeah, so it's one in sixteen. Yeah, easy. One of the things that you instantly win the game. I mean, you don't instantly win the game, but... Pretty good. Huh? Nah. Never lucky. Well, you have the Lightning Storm, right? And Lightning Bolt with it. Yeah, but that's annoying. And we're Lightning Bolting the Flame Waker, not the Azure Drake. We're going phase for seven. I like that. I think it's fine. Gotta say, it looks like uh, 
Looks like Naaman's Tempo Mage is in a good position here. Yeah, Tempo Mage is pretty good. Naaman summons the power of Ragnaros to punish Lothar. So Lothar that doesn't have anywhere close to enough to play any sort of smork game here, does he? Lava so he's burst, stuck playing board tongue. control. Yeah, he has to play Lava Burst, he has to play Flame Tongue, he has to play Sir Finley, Miracle Thon. Does he have to Finley? Yeah. yeah, probably. So I guess it's correct to Finley first, see what your hero powers are. Doesn't matter. Sure. You could argue it's correct to Finley last, this way you get these plays in that you're guaranteed to do and you can really rope out the Finley decision. Yeah, that's probably a better <laughs> argument. What if Naimo just yogs, just puts his tournament life into the yogs are on? Well, he's going to, but not just yet. Put your fight in the yog. The flame strike, the card that he doesn't like that much. Hmm. Just yog, Naiman. Show that you're a man. Come on. It's 14 cards oh, in deck. Oh, he yogs. Yeah. He yogs. Yo, GG. That's a good one. Fine start. That's a That's really good. good one. Plus eight, yeah. Dark Bargain. Not sure about that one. Yeah, that one was not worth. What's the credit sure. is? A mere entity. Oh, uh, that's got to do it. That's got to do it. The Shaman has no board, no hand, and he's up against a guy with a full life total and a big hand. So, you're going to have to... Yeah, it's not enough Pyroblasts to your own face to save this game. I mean, Ancestral... Uh, or Astro Communion. Uh, Astro Communion. Yeah, yeah. But even if you Astro Communion here, you're still way ahead as Temple Mage, I think. He has enough cards in his deck, he's not going to fatigue. Okay. So Counterspell's been tested by that Feral Spirits now. Flame Strike seems good. Yeah, I think Naiman has this. He's going to go to the last game. Lothar's OTK Warrior against Naiman's Tempo Mage. How do you think that matchup goes? It should be OTK Warrior favored. Yeah. The Tempo Mage doesn't have a lot of taunts to stop the OTK. Yeah, and the they have minions images. do have mirror images. Um, so Lothar will have to be a little bit careful to save some kind of Pyromancer plus two spells. or Yeah, I mean, the Pyromancer kind of just does it on your combo turn, right? Because you're already in a Raging or Raging Worgen. Yeah. Although, you can't Pyromancer your Raging Worgen unless you Commanding Shout the combo turn as well, which is costing you more mana. Pyromancer and Commanding Shout. Okay, I guess. Depends on like, how many Emperor takes you get. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're going to get just one, but if you get it on enough cards, it, it'll be fine. And also, you don't necessarily have to... I mean, it's it's tough to play mirror images and stop lethal for enough turns, right? Like, even if you don't have... You can just clear the mirror images and then kill them the next turn. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So basically, Nyman's going to need to have a really high-pressure start that, that Lothar's hand is not equipped to deal with in order to win that matchup. Yep. And that's kind of difficult to do. Not impossible, though. So let's see if the European representative or the G2 representative will make it out of the groups in the second place. I think it, it feels dumb to say it, but I think having Fiery War X in the opener is just a massive um, influence on who wins the game. I mean, again, he can have images to counter the Fiery War X, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. There's the Mana Worm. That's big for Naaman. That's the mirror, the mirror image. Ooh, our so, are we at the point now where Naaman seems currently favored? He's keeping Mana or Mirror Image, the Frotten Torch, and Drake seem too slow. Yeah, yeah. And on the other side, Lothar is looking at his hand and probably thinking, none of these cards are Fiery War Axe. I would keep an Icker. Um, I'll think about a Slam. But, alright, this hand's okay. It's not, not, it's not the answer you want. It's not the Fiery War Axe. But Slam plus Icker can kill that mirror image or kill that mana worm that's hiding behind taunts. Yep. So the turn one mana worm is a decision. You you could actually pass on turn one and go turn two mana worm coin apprentice mirror image, and that way you play around the turn two fiery war axe. Um, he did see Lothar full mulliganed, which lowers the odds of fiery war axe being in Lothar's hand. He also and so he goes for the riskier he play. He also needs to coin the drakes. With his hand. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Flame Strike's really quite useless in this matchup. I don't want to say dead, but it's like really bad. 
yep. because the Warriors' game plan relies so little on having any kind of board presence. Okay. This is not bad for Lothar. So you trade the Twitter for sure. And then... You kind of want to save Execute. He could potentially coin a Water Elemental next turn. You probably just slam Iker. Slam the free to Iker the to free. What do you think? It's fine, right? Yep, that's fine. You lose value out of the slam. Yeah, but you know the deck has a good amount of value. You just want to focus on not dying. Yeah, yeah. I like this play. Two minions to challenge that taunt. And here Nyman has a really awkward turn. I guess he just pings the loot hoarder and passes. That's all he can do. You have to go face here. Not trading protect the taunt. Okay. So this turn is pretty interesting. I still like saving the execute. Do you? For what? Yeah, that's a fair question. If he had what what I got a mental, he would have played it, I think. Yeah, instead of that for sure. So we can read him as not having water elemental. So, so executing a 2-2 two -two might be fine. You can go Acolyte. And execute. Seems strong. Yeah. I mean, there's like, theoretically, maybe an Antonitis somewhere or something, but that's so far away. I don't mind this. It's fine. Yeah, it's alright. So, Coin Drake. Face for three. Just no respect for anything. You could coin torch ping. Maybe that's better. Yeah, I like that better. Mm. Yeah. Force is not like in a situation where he has to like use the execute. All right, so execute and acolyte seems better than shield block. Acolyte's quite threatening. You could theoretically interage it and rampage. Interage and rampage can be used as combo pieces, you don't but you don't. No. I'm not saying this turn, I'm saying no, if the turn. Acolyte's not cleared, um, these kind of plays can happen. Uh, Innerage Taskmaster trade seems really strong. Innerage Taskmaster trade and then the second Acolyte? Let's start with the Taskmaster, I think. Or do you want to Rampage? I don't. You want to keep the Rampage for the Worgen, right? Well, if I Rampage, I can't Acolyte is one factor. It's not so much. Okay. Like, if, if an Acolyte would survive... Oh, it does. I just miscounted. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the Rampage is good. Isn't, wasn't it better than to play the Inner Rage and play the second Acolyte? But then you lose the Cruel Taskmaster. Then uh, you lose the Inner Rage, which is like better for the combo than Cruel Taskmaster is. Right. And I like developing the 2-2. Two -two. It's like fine. Yeah. Save the mana for the combo turn. Two, two, the two one survives. Now a lot I can go for Acolyte, Trade, Blood to Iker, and the Ravage and Goal, which is like insane. Yeah. It looks like uh, Nyman's in good shape here. Or sorry, not Nyman. Lothar's in good shape here with the, the Warrior. Um, Nyman has some burn. He's thinking about maybe he can um, just close the game out that way, but there's the shield block in Lothar's hand, which is going to... where both shield blocks are going to get in the way of that plan. So it just seems really tough for the Tempo Mage to win. Um, he needed a kind of like a decisive lead early, and he didn't really get it. It's not all the way over. Maybe Emperor does something. How good is Emperor? Uh, I, I no, don't we're just like flame any... striking. You're never getting a better flame strike. Okay, but then like, well, I mean, the thing Nyman has going for him is that this game's Lothar's not going to kill him anytime soon. It seems really hard for Nyman to get through Lothar's defenses, and it seems like Nyman can't stop Lothar's offense. But you never know. There's there's time. There's hope. Things can happen. Lothar needs to draw that Emperor Taurus, and then he wins. The okay. Without Emperor, it's well, he needs hard. charge as well, right? Yeah, yeah Emperor in charge. Um, if if, if Nyman Ten plays Yogg. Yogg's a big card in this matchup, because if you Yogg, you can get secrets, and a lot of the secrets stop the Raging Organ combo. Uh, if you get a Freezing Trap, if you get a Snipe, if you get an Ice Block, if you get a Vaporize, there might be a few more. 
uh, Repentance. So there's a lot of secrets to just kind of stop this combo deck. So Yogg's actually just a really scary card for Worgen Warrior to beat. Wow. Frostbolt face to stop War Axe from clearing Emperors easily. He has the Exekid, so he's in a good shape. Hey, there's the War Axe. Yeah. No, I don't mind the Frostbolt. Yeah, it's all right. Wait. Did you want to faceless it? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Probably not. Ah, uh, maybe it was. Ah, uh, nah, it wasn't that good. No, it wasn't that good. He'd already used a Taskmaster and a Rampage, so if he facelessed it, um, he would then have what? Worgen charge, double inner rage, but there's no Taskmaster, no Rampage, no faceless. He might be missing too much damage if he doesn't save faceless yeah, for combo. Yeah, you have to save the faceless for the combo. Just simply executing it is fine. Yeah, he's thinking about, you know, battle raging and looking for other ways to do it, but it doesn't seem worth. And he yeah. plays the War Axe to demonstrate that that Frostbolt was actually a play that worked out very well. <laughs> he's super far ahead, and I'm on a thing in Zantonida, so I do anything here. Oh, Flamemaker's a good one. That's a lot of damage. Instantly played by Naiman. I like the Thalnos. Do you like the fireball over the torch? No. Me neither. I guess um, playing the torch makes sense if you want to draw a fireball, which maybe we don't here actually, so maybe that's why fireball is better than torch. It's also more mana efficient. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. the, the theory is Nyman wants to draw a minion rather than a fireball, because the fireball is just not enough damage to be lethal with the way things are going. So you're just like ravaging good war, attack with the inner rage, attack with the fireworks into the two, three, and then inner rage, hero power, and that's it. Wow, using an inner rage feels bad, but I guess it will still have enough, right? If we go worgen charge is five, inner rage is eight, twice, yeah, faceless with, manipulate with faces, four it's times, like it's 32. Much. It's 32, yeah. It's yeah. Tons of damage. You it's actually like it. fairly close, but yeah, it's, it's enough. No, it's not fairly close, is it? Worgen charges 5, Inner Rage is 8. Uh, with Faceless, it's 4 times 8 is 32. With the Fireworks, 35. That's sure, I think we're using damage. the Fireworks to kill two minions this game, though, before we draw that. Still tons of damage. Enough damage. Yeah. Yeah, Lotar sees the line. Goes for it. Naiman draws the torch. He's thinking about saving that Inner Rage. I don't know. I think he should use it. Hmm. Yeah, he's used both shield blocks, so it's now getting to where maybe Nyman can just burn him out. Can he? He's got two fireballs. And, well, depends how well he draws. His Arcane Intellect seems good. He's you thinking about whether to torch before the Arcane Intellect so that he draws that fireball sooner, right? You should. Yep, I agree. Torch I, th I think he's right? low enough that we want to... Oh, we're torching the 3-3? Three -three? Yeah. Hmm. Torching face is pretty yolo. I like it. I figured that three wins gonna die anyways. He's working where he has so many ways to deal one. Ooh. Oh wow. Antonidas. Uh yeah, I don't know why Lothar didn't enrage that, but now he's in pretty big danger. So I'm thinking I frostbolt face this turn. Oh wow. What the heck? Both executes are used, right? Yeah, well Lothar is faceless now. That's that's interesting. I had not considered that possibility. Is that good? Well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. Hearthstone is a cool game. What are we going for here? Oh, we're just fireballing. Yeah, okay, of course, of course. Um, what did you think you're going for? Do we enrage something else? No, we save it for the combo. Okay, yeah. Well, that's 15 in hand. Wow. Naiman is getting very close to Lethal. Yeah. Is he just going to, like, disrespect the Antonidas? Yeah. You you can't clear the Antonidas. You kind of run out of burn to win, right? Okay. Well, it, it's kind of a question of... Let's see. So the Antonidas is going to kill over two turns with Fireballs, because your, your mana for the turn is Fireball, Fireball, Armor Up, right? So that's 12 from the Fireballs, plus 5 from the Antonidas is 17, is a two-turn clock. 
Um, so basically, we have to top deck lethal next turn. What does Naiman have? How much damage? So he has one more torch. And that's it. Uh, are there any arcane missiles? I feel like this is the second Frostbolt, second Fireball. One to be honest, torch. I don't remember. Oh, what about Yogg, though? Yogg's the reason for Fireballing the Antonitis. Well, Yogg could also just go face. Hmm. Is, is, pinging in the, is squeezing in the ping important? That's another important question here. Because you could Kill Fireball someone. Roaring Torch, Frostbolt to face. Okay, he's killing Antonitis. Looking no for balls. those Yogg outs. No balls. I think a Bell Rage is Blotar. He needs to, like, cycle. Yeah, and he doesn't have anything. He's not close to getting more cards off. Oh. Oop. So, Worgen Charge is 5, Inner Rage is 8, twice is 16, plus the War Axe is 19, plus the Fireball is 25, plus the other War Axe is 31. So, that's a 3 turn lethal, because we need 3 Fire War Axe attacks. So, we just attack face and like, then we keep the second Fire War Axe, or what? Yeah, I think we Commanding Shout yeah, here. You can Commanding Shout or Bell Rage. Bell Rage might be better. Yeah, sure. Just Bell Rage and see what happens, I guess. He only has four cards left in his Actually, deck. Actually, no, so he, ne he needs to Fireball. So he, he also needs to arm more up, and he needs to keep Fire War Axe. So he, he cannot Bell Rage. Well, he could save Fireball for removal. No, he has to Fireball face here. It has to go face. He doesn't have any more damage in deck to draw. Yeah. Because we've seen both Inner Ages, Taskmaster, Rampage, Faceless. Yeah, you're right. All of this has to go face. Fireball so face, Hero Power. Is the light. Is the wow. right line. And Lothar goes for it. Nice play. I mean, he wouldn't play the work, and there's like no reason to play it, right? No, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, okay. Oh, shit. <sighs> I mean, that's a reason to play it, right? But we're going to have to be able to connect somehow anyways, because the Fiery War Axe has to get in, too. Yo, GG. Wow, I was calling this for the Warrior. I, I think I underestimated. I think I forgot about Yogg when I was saying Warrior was heavily favored. The Yogg is... Snake Trap. Yeah, not relevant. Now's this spell. Oh, let's see. Uh, burst. Oh. Hey. Suicidal Lava Burst. Power Shot not good either. Healing Wave. This is kind of very important. important. Loses the Joust, but... Where is it targeting? That's the big question. It has one out of three to target his own face. Targets hey. his own face. Oh. Astral Communion. Wow, he loses his whole hand. That's pretty bad, Yogg, so far. That's a lot of damage. Get some nice worthless imps. Yeah. And that's, that's a shitty Yogg. That was really bad. He did not get any, any of the game-winning secrets, and he discarded his hand. Which is like tons of damage. Is there any reason to save the excess mana? What if you draw like a Flame Waker? Did you already play both this game? Like sometimes you can just play the excess mana the following turn since you're not going to play any card you draw off of it this turn. Lothar he doesn't know what secret uh, Naiman has. It's going to be interesting for him. Wow. It's not an easy spot. Yeah, we know it's a Snake Trap, which is... Uh, one of the worst ones for Naiman, but it can be Bear Trap, it can be Freezing Trap, it can be... Explosive doesn't matter. Snipe doesn't matter. I mean, Snipe can't matter. Yeah, if it's Snipe, you want to lead with Emperor, right? You just Emperor Hero Power because, you know, he doesn't have any more Burst in his deck. I think I'd start with, uh, by War Axe in the face because we need that damage, right? Yeah, you War Axe in the face. And that tells us something about the secrets. About the secret, rather. Okay, so, so he knows he's no, he's not bear trap. He knows it's not explosive. It's not, it's explosive. not misdirection. It's not misdirection either. Yeah. So snipe just got significantly more likely. So I like emperor battle rage. Oh, he's also got to think about dart trap. That's a little bit scary. Dart trap. Okay. Hmm. So maybe armor up before you play the emperor. Do you want to take the dart trap to the face here? Hmm. We know two of those cards in his hand are worthless imps. We know a lot of his burns already been discarded if we're paying that close of attention to his discard, which is really hard to do, to be fair. Okay, nine damage here. No lethal. We'd like to deal with that Emperor, but it's tough. If we trade into Emperor, are we realistically fatiguing this guy? Ooh. Cabal's Tome gives us more draws towards cards like Vaporize and Ice Block to survive the Worgen combo. Woo! Wow. Indeed, there it is. How many cards does Naiman have? Five. Holy shit, this game is going to fatigue. It's a very insane game. Does he play the Ice Block? He plays the Ice Block. Wow. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Does Otter have the combo damage? He does, right? It was 16 when I last counted. It's uh, 3, 5, 8, 16. 
19. So we're one off here? How did that come about? Yeah, he's one off. Well, I mean, if he can survive for like five or six turns, then he can wait for fatigue to do the last point of damage. Okay. Um, I think we've discussed all of the damage in his deck being drawn. We've seen the Rampage. We've seen the Taskmaster. We've seen both Inner Ages. Okay. We've seen the Faceless. You might have one more Rampage. We've seen both War Axes. I don't think he's playing Double Rampage. I, th I think I've seen his entire deck by now, and I don't think there were two of them. Mm -hmm. So Lothar's got quite a puzzle here of trying to find one more damage somewhere. Maybe he just Pyromancers and just believes that it connects? Nah. I don't like it either. I like this. Yeah. I like his line. Second Roaring Torch, the last piece of damage that Naiman had in his deck. This is becoming very interesting. Like, there's so many possibilities and being in the... If I were one of those players, it wouldn't be like the most comfortable situation. Yeah. Like, we, I, we I've literally seen a lot don't of know that. who wins. Well, I think it looks good for Naiman. Um, I don't see how Lothar kills him, and he's behind in the fatigue count. He has all these cards that draw cards, but he only has one card left in his deck, so he doesn't ever want to play them. So just, he has a bunch of dead draw cards, and he's short on damage. Um, it, if he can squeeze this one out, I'll be really impressed. Naiman doesn't have anything either. Naiman doesn't need anything. Naiman doesn't need to kill Lothar, he just needs to kind of sit there and not die for a few turns. Jeez, and when he say he doesn't have anything, like there's... Oh, there's something. Okay. Yeah, both Pyromancers are at the bottom. Holy shit. So you can Pyromancer, Pyromancer in one spell. He's just hoping those somehow connect. He's just... Clearing some stuff. Boy, we're taking damage. It feels bad. Hmm. You have to go really deep to find a way to win this game. You probably have to play another spell. And then that way, maybe the Water Elemental doesn't want to trade into a 3-1 Pyro, and it connects with his face, and then that's enough damage to win. We don't know it's an Ice Block. We're still hoping it's something more irrelevant than that. What now? So yeah, I think he's going to play uh, Commanding Shout here, armor up and pass, hope that the Water Elemental goes face, and that there's no lethal, and that the secret's something other than Ice Block. Pretty optimistical. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to be optimistic. It's better than just losing. And the mirror images here is pretty good. And there's, what, three fatigue damage coming? So he's at 13. Water Alley puts him to 10. Yeah, I think Naiman has no way of losing this. So it's, it's not lethal this turn, but we can just clear the board, put some taunts up, go face. There's maybe an argument for saving the mirror images since we're not taking any fatigue damage, so we don't. Yeah, no, it's good. Wow, that this, was. Uh, this series was like weird. This is a heartbreaker for Lothar. That's twice I've seen him lose game five with the Worgen Warrior. Um, the more I watch the deck, the more I think the popularity of Yogg is a big problem for the deck. <laughs> yeah, Yogg can like just win games that we're not supposed to be won. Like, I think the deck is fantastic against Zoo and Shaman, but as soon as you run into, uh, like, a, C a Cthune Warrior that can armor up out of range, or some kind of random taunt druid or shaman that can just taunt up that you can't get through, or uh, some kind of Yogg deck that puts up a secret you can't beat, it's just, it can be difficult to find a way to win. Or Reno Lock playing Sawgoth the Slither, like... Yeah. There's ways, to, it's a very powerful deck against very specific matchups, but it's fragile. The only possible line that Lothar had was like to just put Naiman at one and then like leave Naiman to click the board. And after Naiman clicks the board, Lothar needs to like just get rid of the, fire, of the water elemental. And then if he waits until Fatigue, he wins. But that's, I'm not sure if it's doable math wise. How does he get rid of the water elemental? The Pyromancer and the stuff. 
Like, first of all, Neymar would delay the water elemental with one or two turns because he would have to clear the pyromancers, but... And it was a very, very hard uh, game and very, very hard series overall. All right, so a uh, hard-fought series. Yeah, Congrats Naiman to Naiman for winning it. Yeah, Naiman advances. Lothar put up a good fight. He yeah. eliminated Powder, and uh, he almost uh, eliminated Naiman, so... so as a team, how did G2 do? How many made it through? Uh, three out of four. Three out of four. 75%. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> got to be happy with that. Yeah, pretty good. And Lothar was literally one game away from advancing as well. Yeah, yeah. We're looking store for tomorrow. All right, so thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to be back later with the last uh, set of group on the B stream. Cool.